I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk about our new product, Pivot Explorer. I've installed that. It's available here under Site Contents. I've added that from the App Store. Uh, and here it is, the Pivot Explorer. And I've also created a few lists. First, there is the example data list. And then there are a departments list and a projects list. So let's uh, start with the example data, which is the one that you can create yourself by going into the Pivot Explorer settings page like this and just say how many tickets you want to create and then create the example list. I'm not going to do that because I've already done it now, but that's how you would create it. So let's show you the product. And of course, if you have data in SharePoint in the form of lists or document libraries with a lot of categorization, then doing summaries is a really important thing, of course, getting statistics on it. You can, of course, export the list to Excel, but that's kind of a hassle and you need to be, build your own reports and they don't really get saved with the SharePoint data and they don't get updated automatically either. So that's why we created the Pivot Explorer product and it's right here, both in the classic mode and in the modern mode here, which I'm showing. So you just click on the button and that takes you into the Pivot Explorer for SharePoint lists and it's showing the last view that I have. So here I'm summarizing all that data and by default, it picks up all the numeric or currency fields. So I have the size and the quantity and the total sales. And of course, the size is not that relevant to make sums of in most cases, but the quantity and the total sales are of course relevant. So if I change this now, now you see I, I can see the totals in quantity instead of in total sales. And of course, if you're used to working with Excel pivot table, this is exactly the same thing. We don't have all the Excel functionality, but quite a bit of it actually. So you can switch around this information. You can drag and drop. Now it's grouped by product. If I remove that and instead drag in the business type, you'll see that it um, is grouped by business type instead. And if I don't want to see the categories, I can just get that simple view. We also have a few different views here of table, table bar, heat map, let me show you the heat map. That actually makes a lot of sense. If I put the categories in there, then I can put a heat map on there. And as you see, it colors the different values differently depending on how high they are in comparison to each other. The heat map row is slightly different in columns compare. that. This is what you're comparing to. If you're comparing within the row or within the column. And we have the bar chart, of course, classic bar chart there. And then we have a stacked bar and column like that. Very nice. Now I'm showing this in rather uh, low resolution. Uh, if you have a bigger screen, which I'm sure you do, then this will fit in on your screen nicely, of course, depending on how many columns you have. All right, we have the stacked columns, same story there, really. The line bar is like that and the area. And if you find something that you really like, I think the stacked bar was, was nice. I think that's the most appropriate one for showing this. Then you can save this view and just call it business type bars. That makes sense for this data. And if you only have one view, it's going to default to that the next time I open the, this, the, this application. But you can also, of course, open the different views. So if I want to have another one here, I want to have one which shows the heat map. And I'll save that. Business type heat map. And of course, these views now are shared within the organization and they're updated with the latest data always, of course. So now I can just flip between these two um, views. The heat map. And let's see, open the view. There we go. And then we have the bars switch that, that's the bars. And then we have the default one that was in the example data. And that was the one we started with. So that shows you how to work with saving and opening views and pivoting the data around on the different views that we have. Let me go back and just show you how this product works with different lists. So let's show the departments, which is a very, very simple list with just a couple of points. We have the title field, we 
have the employees, which is the number field, of course, and we have a category as a choice field. So if I click on Pivot Explorer for that, it'll pick up the first number field and calculate by that by default, and then it will group by the first choice field if you have one of those. But of course, you can change all that. So now it's showing big, small, and total. So I have 50 employees in, gen in total. But of course, I can just switch this around if I want and save the views and all that I showed you before. Let's go into the projects list. And we can switch to the classic view here to show you how that looks also. Let's go into the list settings and switch to the classic view under advanced settings to show you where the Pivot Explorer button shows up then, the classic experience. And let's go back to the projects list and there we see that now and under lists. And here's the Pivot Explorer in classic mode. Works the same way, of course, it opens an, an app and displays that. And there we can see the sum of approved budget by state in this case. And again, you can switch between the different numeric values and you can um, move these around. And let's have the status show by that instead. You see that. And of course, again, we can switch between the different uh, views there and we can save views. And here's the configuration page, by the way. If you uh, want to delete the list or clear the catch, those are the few things. And there you have the example list and the custom views. So that concludes this demonstration. Thank you for watching.